Hey everybody, this is the Amerby Junkies Podcast. And today we have special guest, the Jolly Yellow Nerd. We're going to be sitting down talking to him, finding out stuff about him and his opinion on so many things in our little universe. Today in the Amerby Junkies Podcast. And we're back. Hey, everyone. This is the Mary Me Junkies podcast. Let's start off all the way over here. We're going to start with the boss. Hey, I'm y'all. The, it's your favorite podcast, your favorite podcaster, a.k.a. Little Taku, a.k.a. Comic Buzz. Uh, I've been a fan of uh, Jolly Little Nerds from the beginning, man. I think, like, honestly, since you came on TikTok, we, we've been following each other. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I've been like... A long time a lot of, coming, honestly. <laughs> a lot of times I agree with him. A lot of times I disagree with him. But that's what makes it fun. Exactly. Everybody can't think the same. You gonna have, have an echo chamber. That, that, would, be boring. Boring. It, that would be boring. There you go. Boring. I ain't, I ain't but I, that. so so before <laughs> like before we just started, he had just showed us his wall, right? And he had a lot of Pokemon stuff, especially with the badges. So I gotta ask you, what's your favorite Pokemon? Oh, and what would be your good start in six? Mm, okay. So favorite Pokemon is, and I didn't get to close uh, like zoom in on those, but that's actually the Hoenn badges. That's Generation Three, uh, uh, Sapphire Ruby. And if I'm gonna get one favorite Pokemon, it's gonna be Mudkip. He was the water starter from mm. Sapphire Ruby. I, he's just my favorite one. So he, nice. he, he's a favorite. Now, who a six. Picking a whole team of six. Mm. Mm. Now, I like my water Pokemon. Same, so, same. So, so I think it's fertile, so I might be with you. If I'm going to make a team, it's going to be based off of the water starter. So just to kind of make it a little bit easier, trying to go through all 1,000 Pokemon. <laughs> so got to give props to, 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 to Squirtle. He's the one that started it off. So we get that Blastoise. Uh, we definitely have Marsh, Marshtop. That's Mudkip's final form. And let's see. I'm going to jump around a little bit. I jump up to Generation, I think it's Generation 7, just for those kind of odd special effects moves, the uh, the water type. It was like the, she was like a seal, kind of like a Primarina, I think it was. Like, she was all themed around her singing voice and stuff. I would actually have her in there just to, you know, mix it up, trip things up a little bit. Uh, and then, let's see, the fourth spot, that's going to be Greninja. That's going to be, he was the water from, uh, Gen six, I think. Good now, choice. We need two more. We need two more. Um, I'm a fan of was it Shield and Sword? That um, I forgot his final form's name. It was kind of like themed after a sniper. Uh, it was like one of the water type. He had that. Uh, gosh, he had like a, a gun on his arm or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Sc- Scoble was like the. His his starter form was is called Scoble. I forgot like his final form name, so I probably take him as the fifth. So that leaves one more, one more. I would probably give that final spot. Let's see, Magic Card. <laughs> Magic Card was not a starter, but. Gar- Gyarados is not bad. <laughs> I mean, not bad at all. I mean, um, you can make the argument, but uh, right. no, nah, I'd probably go for uh, Oshawott. Uh, whatever, I-, I forgot Oshawott's final form from Gen 5. I'd probably take okay. him just because okay. he's got a cool look there. And I- I'm not promising I will be winning any tournaments or running through any regions or anything, but it'd be a fun team to have. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think you'll get a couple badges with that team. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, Black Stories by himself is like a tank. Right, that defense. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with that being said, with you enjoying Pokemon, uh, what were your thoughts on Power World when it first <laughs> came? <laughs> okay, so with Power World, I'm actually fine with his existence because, you know, th- th- there's always going to be like something comes first, does a great innovation, and then somebody else will come along and take it in like a different direction that the original's not doing. So the fact that Power World exists, I'm ultimately okay with it. But I'll be honest with you, I'm not terribly interested in going to play it. I mean, it's just – it. I mean, it, it just doesn't interest me. It's uh, not only with the concept of the, uh, you know, basically your you know, combat and you're making them like work to produce resources and stuff like that. It's like resource management, survival, and I'm not a big fan of that in my video games. So, but I mean, let it exist. It has a fan base. People are playing it. People are enjoying it. Let them have it. You don't, you don't want to run around with a blicky. No. Nah. You to get in the Pokeballs. Nah, I'm, I'm not trying to make him get in a Pokeball at gunpoint. The weird, yo, the weirdest thing for me from watching gameplay, I'm like, so you get pals, you make them work for you, then you arm them. Then you, I'm like, this sounds like a Team Rocket build area. It sounds exactly. like it sounds like this is where Team Rocket was supposed to go. It does. You know what? I never thought of that. <laughs> but, you're, but, but, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're right. <laughs> let let him cook, folks. Let him cook. <laughs> you're you're not wrong. You really does sound like a team rocket scheme. It does sound like 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 the, uh, what's the name? Since you out there, they go set up. They go set up shop and take over this region for Team Rocket. Man, man, that you say that, Corey. It definitely seems that way. You're like I'm just, yeah. I'm just like, saying. You are not the hero <laughs> in Power World. Mm-mm. Pull a pull, pull a braid twist. Right. Oh, <laughs> so you are not the hero. Mm-mm. So so on your uh on your TikToks, you play uh some retro games. Yes. Yes. What are you playing right now? Okay, so the most recent thing that I was playing, um went back like pretty far in time uh on on the switch i've got the sega ages version of the original fantasy star this was like sega right this was like sega master systems i I didn't play it back in the day i was a nintendo kid so i was like you know what i bought it i bought it when it was on sale probably like a year or two ago and i if you look at my Switch, you will see so many games that I have bought and I just haven't gotten around to play yet. So that's kind of where the whole retro series came Listen, from. It's like, you know, I got all these games on my backlog. I need to do something with them. Right, right, right. Listen, you're going to start taking tours and going places. Uh, all, that bus and train time, Switch, you like, time has come. Look, <laughs> even so far, like I've... I think I've gotten to one or two other cities and I'm still tripping out over how it's like sci-fi sounding music. We're talking about spaceports, but we got shield and swords out fighting bugs and monsters. And I'm like, what is this blend of fantasy and science fiction that's going What's on that? here? Because I've never actually played a fantasy star game before. So this oh, is like, what? exactly. So yeah, this is okay. I've, I've watched other people yeah. play. I've seen like gameplay footage, like Fantasy Star Online. I saw how that was a big deal back in the Dreamcast days and stuff Shoot. like that. So it looks awesome, but I just it, never got it's around still to play. Out it. Now, oh, Fantasy Star Online is still going. It's a whole new game. It's free to play. Of course, uh, of course, mm. there's like microtransactions for stuff, yeah. you, other stuff you want to do wow. in skins. But there's yeah, it's out there. Okay, okay, I'll have to. Uh... I see. I, I I tell you that I do want to check it out, but at the same time, I ain't got time for an MMO these days. This is true. I can't. If if I were to do an MMO right now, I'd probably go back to Lord of the Rings Online. If I were to do an MMO right now, Ooh. Lord of the Rings Online. Oh mm-hmm. man. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, it's an MMO. Yeah, set in the Lord of the Rings universe, mm-hmm. and you. You don't play any of the actual fellowship or anything, but the storyline of the game kind of coincides with it. So you're going to be there's going to be I think um 
like one of the main quests, it takes you to Rivendell and you're there at the same time as the council from like the first book or first movie where they like came together to figure out what to do in the ring. You're there at the same time. You talk to Elrond, you talk to the members of the fellowship and everything like that. It was a pretty good game, actually. It's uh it's still up and running. It's been going since gosh, like 2008, 2009. Well, I'd say it still has a pretty good community base. So mm -hmm. I would see. Was, was you a part of the wild club? The wow! I don't, I I did not play WoW. I actually, my buddy of mine back then, we were like, oh, we want to want want to play an MMO, and we both decided together, like, oh, I don't want to play World of Warcraft. So we were looking for something else to play, and we saw Lord of the Rings Online, so we gave that a try. Gosh, I played that for a good ten years or so. I played like from two thousand eight oh, wow. to about twenty eighteen. That was the only MMO that I played, except for a brief stint in. What's the Star Wars one that's going on right now? Star Wars, The Old Republic. Yeah, I, I, I played that for about five or six months, but kind of lost interest in that. Mm. But, but yeah, Lord of the Rings Online. That's, and it's still actually one about once a year. I'll reinstall it and play it. I'm a issue with right. right. I'll play it for maybe a month or so, and then I put it down because it's like I run out of time. Because who has time for MMOs anymore? Right. Right. <laughs> I always wanted to play uh, World of Warcraft. Never could because it had that uh, fifteen dollar a month barrier, and you know, mm -hmm. it, but, like, but now I think it's, it's starting to start to come back. A lot of people now are actually starting to get back into uh, MMOs. Mm -hmm. but yeah. I was never, I was never like really a fan of that. E even now, I play like single player games. I play like Assassin's Creed yeah. and, and Star Wars and stuff. Right, right. Because I know, um, yeah, with MMOs, it's just those things are such a time suck. And you got Final Fantasy 14. Played a, I played a demo with that. I never actually got the full game. That, yeah, they, yeah, 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 he's like, yeah, he knows. <laughs> no, Final Fantasy 14 at launch was a catastrophe. Oh, you were there for the launch of the original? Yeah. It I I heard about that. I heard it was rough. Man. <laughs> it was, it was, like, you know it's bad when the director of the game is like, okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to remake this entire game. And it was like, oh, wow. what do you mean remake it? It's like, yeah, we're tearing all of this down. We're going to remake the game. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, because that's because that's pretty much what that's pretty much what they did. Yeah, that's that's real. When you got to reboot your universe, but but yeah, comic boss. Um, with Final Fantasy fourteen, like like he said, that launch it was garbage. The world wasn't working out. People didn't like it. So that's when they did Final Fantasy fourteen. Uh, What's it called? Realm Reborn, mm -hmm. and they literally rebooted the universe in game. Like some like universe destroying entity or something came in there. And That's destroyed smart. the whole, yeah, and they kind of yeah. use that as yeah. a okay, here's the new world, and but you know, it worked right, right, yeah, they, right. They rebooted the universe, it worked, and people are playing that game to this day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they needed it, they needed to reboot it. I think the last MMO I jumped into was uh, was uh, ESO, and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. by my super so I tried it on the console. Which is absolutely horrible. It's a horrible experience. You, you can't like you can't do no MMOs on a console. No. Can't do no MMO on console. Nah. So I put it down and just went and go play Skyrim. <laughs> you might as well. I played the some of the beta on that, and I was just like, yeah, I, yeah. I'm fine. I can just go play Skyrim. I'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. I was going to go play Skyrim at home. Right, we got Skyrim at home on every <laughs> console ever made in the last like twenty. If the console was made in the last twenty years, it has a version of Skyrim. So it has Skyrim and it has GTA Five. <laughs> right, but yeah, but that's the squeeze, but that's the the blood from the stone for uh, Skyrim. Look. It's like twenty different versions of it out there. Man. Listen, when your game becomes the top RPG in Japan, it's one of those moments you're just like. 
Wait, wait, wait. Skyrim became a top RPG in Japan? Yeah, when Skyrim came out, it was it wasn't it was a international hit. It became it was the top RPG being played in Japan. Well, and that is amazing because American exactly. RPGs American RPGs have a very hard time breaking the very market hard. in Japan. Uh, it's hard. Exactly. Oh, wow. That's impressive. So I did he, not know that. I, I I'll I'll never forget. Because when I saw that listing, I was just like <laughs> Skyrim number one. What Skyrim number one? What the hell right. is going I on have- here? <laughs> but like, but like outside of, of, uh, of Final Fantasy, I mean, there's not a lot of um, JRPGs now that uh, that's um, hitting them, hitting the market hard over here in America. I mean, back in the day, that that that's all we ever played was was JRPG like Fantasy Star Ocean and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that is, I guess. JRPGs have kind of been almost Americanized, Americanized, I guess you could say, because you look at like Final Fantasy like five, six, and seven back in the day, and yeah. now look at what Final Fantasy sixteen was, was that last year it came out or earlier this year. Yeah, yeah I mean it, it's it's almost it's to a point now where people aren't even questioning: Is Final Fantasy sixteen really a JRPG anymore? Is it like an action adventure? It's People are there, those lines are getting blurred so badly now. It's yeah. like you know, the more labels don't work anymore, almost. Plus, the plus the current milking of seven. <laughs> the look on your face <laughs> when I tell you how upset I was <laughs> to learn when Final Fantasy VII Remake first was announced, I was like, okay, cool, they're gonna remake it 2012, <laughs> right? And then it released, and then it's oh, there's going to be a second game, and now it's oh, there's going to be a third game. I'm like, I understand you want to maybe do things that you didn't, you couldn't do in the past, but at some point, it's like, come on, y'all, you're taking one game and you're turning it into three. They go in the Bethesda route, but, but, the but, here, but here's the crazy part. The one time you could have made a live service game, you don't. You talking about you, you talking about Square Enix? Get yeah, like, cause think about it. Instead of making people constantly go out to a store or or download a whole new thing, it's like yeah, this you pay X amount per chapter. Right. Okay. Right. Right. It just like I'm just like this is it's a new and, thing. And that's a world that most people like love to uh to play in, uh Final Fantasy. But, yeah. but they tried that with uh with 14 and, and it as y'all said it fucking it's gone. It's gone. There were so many ugh. right and then it's just I don't know. It, it it just bothered me to my core that they took one game and to remake it, they're turning it into three games. And I'm like, how how can I avoid feeling like this is a cash grab? Right. Because <laughs> right. I, I don't like well, that. Right. I, I try to, like, I don't throw that around lightly, accusing someone of a cash grab. But in the case of Final Fantasy VII Remake and, and the Rebirth, and then, and, and then Westman got his own game, his own spinoff, uh, and then, time. And then the awkward part is they're not even getting the cash. Right. You know, yeah. Because yeah. Rebirth isn't doing as well as Remake and so forth like that. Um, I, so let me oh, ask you, what do you think of the, uh, the game industry right now? The game industry right now is it, it's at a, it, I don't want to say chaotic, but things are kind of in turmoil. Maybe chaos is the right word because a lot of things are happening. You know, COVID did did damage to the industries, did damage to every industry, to where a lot of games got delayed, a lot of games got held up, a lot of stuff probably even got canceled altogether, never see the light of day. It affected gamers because, you know, when COVID hit, people were at home for months at a time. So that allowed people to indulge their video game hobbies. But now that 
people are going back to work. The economy is kind of tanking. People are having to pick and choose how they spend their gaming money. And we're now also seeing that a lot of these massive triple A games are not getting the return that they expected. And you see stuff like, uh, what was that? High Fire Rush came out last year. It was applauded. Love game. I didn't get to play it myself, but I heard people enjoyed it. They were all in for it. And then they shuttered the studio a month or so ago. Like that studio has been closed down. So it's like <laughs> when you're a developer, so think about that. You're a developer and you made a solid good game right. and you still got shut down. Right. Where's the safety and security? What now the question is what what do you need to make in order to guarantee your future? Right. And, 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 and then you see the collapse of, of E3. <clears throat> that's that that's that, that's going now. Yeah. Games that's never going to see the light of day, uh like uh good good versus evil two. Right. Which was uh, like I was so waiting for that to come out. Yeah, I think people. I think there might be a couple of people out there still praying for that one. Um, I'm, I'm one of them. <laughs> I am one of them right there. I feel like, I feel like they're gonna drop something on that at such a random moment that everyone forgot. Like, remember when PlayStation just showed up at E3 and they were like, "Here's the Last Guardian." We were like, "Wait, what?" Oh, damn! That thing from five years ago. Right, we forgot about that. <laughs> right, right. Uh, that was welcome, <laughs> I guess. Right. Cause that was what that was like announced back during the PS2 days. And right. then it finally came out like near the end of the PlayStation 3's life or something crazy like that. Yes. I'm like, geez. It was just like cool, I guess. Um, better late, <laughs> right? Like better late than never. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> But no, and then, then you've even got your larger publishers like your Ubisoft, your EAs and stuff like that, where even they're starting to feel, you know, they're putting tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars into these games, and they're just not getting the return. Yeah. And that EA massive also sucks. Well, yeah, they do. And that um that massive AAA model, it's not holding, it's not sustainable. You can't have you know those games or whatever where they cost uh, you know two three hundred million dollars and you're only selling you know eight ten million copies like if you're lucky because these days you know if a game it and i think it's become an ugly cycle where gamers have really high expectations publishers and developers have really high expectations and if they're not instantly met it's almost like a if this game doesn't break records, it's considered a failure. Like yeah. again, citing Hi-Fi Rush, how do you come out with a solid, respectable game and then turn around and get closed down before you can even make another game? You know, right. you have like now you got a lot of these studios. So now, what happens if you make a bad game? Like uh, the next, the next Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Shadows. You know, that's the big talk right now over over reasons that really aren't even about the game itself. But yeah, not at all. <laughs> What what do you think is going to happen if that comes out and it doesn't do that well? And we're talking a major franchise, Assassin's Creed. Does that yeah. mean does that mean we're never going to get Assassin's Creed again? Or maybe it gets put on the shelf for eight or ten years until somebody comes back and revisits it. Right. Like, it's. <sighs> but then on the other side of gaming, you had like you got stuff like Bendy and the Ink Machine. Hell mm -hmm. divers, like the, like these, <laughs> like the right. poppy playtime, like these games are knocking it out the park. Hell divers has I, I didn't even I've never even heard of Hell Divers one. I, I played right, the first one and I enjoyed it. So Hell when Hell Diver two came out, I'm like okay, it looks good. I don't think it's like anything like. Revolutionize the gaming industry, but like man, it has a cool it's fun. Fun. It is. It's it's great That's though. Yeah. It's fun. It, yeah, exactly. it's fun. It's fun. I like it. <laughs> it's doing something that a lot of I guess publishers have lost sight of. Like you just said, it's fun. It's a it's a simple premise. It's something you can get behind. It's you know people have memed the daylights out of it. Right. You know people right. coming up with their own storylines about. 
you know, trees. It's got to the point now where I'm watching TikToks about this. I'm like, are are they? Is this seriously what's going on in the game, or are people just <laughs> recording their footage and putting their own voice on it to, to you know, tell their own fan fiction, basically? And it's it's fan fiction. Right, and it's, listen, red versus blue went, went went for so long, and it's good. I'm surprised no one has tried to do a red versus blue treatment on Helldivers 2. It would be so easy at this point, too. You know, somebody did. I actually seen a, a creator. They uh, they had blended Helldivers with Halo. Oh, gosh. Yeah, somebody mm. somebody, somebody from one of oh. the OSDs called in for help, and a Helldiver came. And he like, yo, we here to help y'all. And it was it was good. Like, yo, this is going to be the, the, the new red versus blue right here. Let's see. That would be perfect. That's actually uh because I've been kind of running ideas through my head, like different people talking about like different crossover events, how to look and everything. And I think a uh, Halo Helldivers crossover would be golden. You could do, you know, put in like the uniforms that the ODST troopers wore as like the armor and helldivers, put some Halo weapons in there. Uh have you seen the mod where they make everyone look like um Clone troopers from Star Wars. I've seen that. Yes. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they, yeah, look like clone troopers. You could easily go back and do something like that for Halo, and you know the heavy armor can be, of course, the Master Chief armor because, and so forth like that. Halo is one of those games that's that's suffering right that's suffering right now. And that's me. And sh so I think a blend with but that and Helldivers would be amazing for Halo. Unfulfilled promises and like Halo, Halo <sighs> Infinite. Look, I think Halo needs to take a break. Like, honestly, like, like seriously, like, I don't know, is Halo Infinite doing any more like content road? Like, they still have they reached the end of their roadmap and they're done with it, or no, they're still <laughs> updating for multiplayer. Okay, so I would still, say still, still a heavy multiplayer community. Multiplayer, okay, so I would let that run its course. And then I would just put Halo on the shelf. Like, no more new main Halo games for the rest of this generation, and maybe even skip the entire next. Just put it away for a break because it, people are aggravated now. It's at the time where a lot of the, even a lot of the diehard Halo fans are like, this, cool. this ain't working. This ain't cool. it. <laughs> I'm a hardcore Halo fan, and I don't like Halo Infinite. I keep, right. playing, I keep playing Halo Guardians because it's still up. I have more fun playing that. All right. See, and I don't blame you because it's I guess it's lost its direction, it's lost its way. Like I the last <laughs> Halo I seriously played was Halo 3. Like I kind of mm. just like four. Uh, I think, and then, I think that's when I, I played too, but it, it still goes like, like 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 these triple A studios don't want to Put out any new IPs because they don't know if it's going to be a hit or not, and they, and they, and these IPs are starting to cost in the hundreds of millions now. Uh, so like three, four, three studios is just going to come out with another Halo game because they know they will at least make their money back. Right, they're afraid. Yeah, the bigger. Yeah, you can definitely say that the bigger publishers and them they're afraid to experiment at this point. Yeah, and, I am. and it really shows because it's like. They, they don't want to do anything new because it's like, well, what if we don't make our money back? Yeah. So they, like you just said, they put into the old franchise, rehash it, remake it, remix it, whatever. And yet it makes money, but again, it creates that kind of... Uh, the game, like the, gaming, the gaming executives think just like the Hollywood executives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the game is starting to go into the hundreds of millions now, like, like movies. I think... Uh, right. I had did an article about that, and and Grand Theft Auto was the last game that cost it close to half a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. But here's the, but 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 here's the thing. They put you see where all the money went, and then they did everything to make sure money kept coming towards them. Right. See, they put they put in they put in the time, the effort, and the work. And it, it, it was like they built they built it just right. They were just like, okay, let's like, what do we what do we what do we do good with Grand Theft Auto Four? Okay, can we do this bigger? Cool. 
okay, can we add this? Yeah. Let's make, like, how do we monetize this more? You have to buy a certain type of cards so you can buy stuff online. Okay, cool. Like, they, they, they figured out how to get it done without it feeling predatory. This is like, you could just grind it out and make your, make your money. Right. Or you could buy a shark card. That's right. okay. Either way. Like there, like there was a like, there was a lot of little things they did that ended up building their pyramid. Mm -hmm. Hey Jolly, are you excited for GTA Six? Um, I'm curious about it. Um, like I only, I, I never did the GTA Online stuff. I messed around with the the, the main story with the three guys switching between. Um, and six, I, I'm curious about because I'm really interested in how the story is supposed to look. And I know what in that one trailer, it's like the the cop and she has the other guy with her. And now kind of the going ideas are like, which one of them is the protagonist and everything like that. So I, I'm, I'm interested in that part. But what really scares me is I get the feeling or I'm worried that they see GTA 5 online did extremely well it is still doing well i i think at this point now gta 5 is the top selling video game of all time or the top grossing yeah. video game of all time something crazy like that i'm scared that when they make six all they're gonna look at is how can we recreate the magic of gta 5 online I, and, I agree. What, and they're gonna prioritize it and we're gonna end up with a sorry first play or, or single player storyline it's almost it's probably gonna end up like a Call of Duty type thing where the single player story is like nine hours and it's so so, and then they focus on like the three or four years they get out of multiplayer. And I think GTA might I guess what might what we well. right, what we know GTA to be those interesting storylines like look at San Andreas four, five, Vice City and everything like that, those good solid stories. I think that's gonna get lost. Because they're going to be trying to recreate the success of GTA Five Online, and yeah, they might. You know, GTA Five Online did so well that they stopped the. They had DLC storylines that they were going to do, but the online stuff was going so well they just abandoned it. Mm, see, see, Not and true. there you go already. Like Not Trevor was too. supposed to be a deep cover fed. Like, like I love GTA Five, oh, wow. but I think they dropped the ball on a few things because they because they focused on the online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're, they're gonna chase that money, and I'm scared that's gonna mess with their vision and planning of GTA Six, where they're gonna focus too much on trying to get that. Oh my god! Like you can probably best believe that multiplayer or whatever GTA Six Online is or called. That's probably going to be their day one versus GTA Five, where the online component didn't come until what was it like a like the several months, year, maybe even a year six, later, seven months later, something like that. Because yeah, they're gonna they're gonna prioritize that online because I mean, GTA Five is basically I don't know if anybody's ever called it this, but it's basically a live service game, and that's just no. Uh, it it definitely is. I mean, okay, it, it is. It is it's because, they, they, but they, but they, they, they're like, listen, you could do this mode or you could do online mode. Like they give mm -hmm. you, at least they give you that option. <laughs> so, well, yeah, I, I, I'm interested, but I'm also worried because, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I think. They've been too influenced by the success of GTA 5 Online that it's going to mess with their vision of 6, and we're going to end up with like a, a 6 that's good, but it's not going to be as great as it could be to match up to those past ones, you know, like the San Andreas, the 4, and all of those. So, But, you know, I'll still give them a chance, but we probably won't see that until, I think right now they're saying 2025. We probably won't get it until 2026. Yeah. If it's coming out in 2025, they're either going to target it for summer or Christmas. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, uh, let's see. With GTA 6, I mean, that's a juggernaut of a game. What what would you even try to release to compete with that? Like, I, even if even if I were like, may, maybe the annual Call of Duty might be able to mess with GTA 6. Exactly. So, Not like, what? 
not since the last Call of Duty, but they just dropped those dropped four right. hours of gameplay on this. Right. I'm, yeah, it's just like right. if I'm releasing a game in 2025, I'm gonna wait until GTA 6 gets a date, and then I'm like, I don't care if I have to move the, my game away from it. Yeah. The only the only yeah. company that would drop a game to compete with Grand Theft Auto is Nintendo. We got a new Zelda. I think it would work because <laughs> there's not as much audience crossover. Right. right. So that's right. probably the only reason that will work. But yeah, you know, like a let's see, by 2025, hell, you know, we could probably see like the next 3D Mario coming along by then or something like that. Who knows? Because I mean, with Luigi's the Switch... Mansion too. <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> Or the next Smash or something comes along, or finally Mario Kart Nine. <laughs> Are you um? Ha have you tried to hand that uh, uh VR gaming? VR, I I actually have not. Um, I I haven't done any sort of VR because it's just it's out of my price range right now. So hey. yeah, I just <laughs> haven't haven't had a chance to because I mean. Look at that the PS was it PS5 VR right now. That I think is almost expensive as the PS5 that you need to play it with. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's I, I don't have a thousand dollars to drop on gaming right now. Right. If I did if I did, I'd put it in a computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I, I had a thousand dollars for PS5 and the VR2, I would put it in my gaming PC. That's what sure. that's what I was saying to Corey. Like, like I want a PS5 or Xbox, right? But I'd rather just take that money and just upgrade my PC. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I have an Xbox. I already know after this, I'm just gonna get a gaming PC. Yeah, I'm gonna get, get a gaming PC. Imagine what you could do with a thousand dollar graphics card. <laughs> right? That's wild. Right? Mm -hmm. That Unreal yeah. Engine five. <sighs> Because uh, what was it? Uh, Santa Monica Studios just just released God of War Ragnarok for PC, or they're yeah. about to. Mm, yeah, I think I think they're about to. It yeah, might be out already, but yeah, yeah. So that's uh, I'm, they they, I'm they just showcased it at mm -hmm. the uh, at some state of play the other day. Which I still need to go and watch that presentation. I've not watched that presentation yet. I've heard people talking about it. You know, everybody's gonna come out and make their videos and stuff about it. It was hmm? there was no shockers. Mm. Yeah, no shockers. I was just like, okay. The, Every, like, the, the best thing they showed was a live service game called Concord, which Con is. Con I, <laughs> that's, looks that's like, I mean, they showed they showed other stuff that was like okay, <laughs> but the best thing they showed to me was was, was Concord, and it Concord like, reminds me of uh, every other shoot 'em game, but every week you get storyline, you get lore. When okay. you log in, you get lore, then you go into you know, shooting. Uh, right now, the great right now, the real question when it comes to this this hero shooter business is uh. What the hell is going on with this Marvel rival stuff? Because so far, from what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing, the gameplay is a lot tighter than Overwatch. Mm, I will hope right. so. And I've been and, hearing a lot of Overwatch comparisons too, like even well, down no, to no, right they, when they created this game, they were like, "I want Overwatch with Marvel characters." See, yeah, that's what I keep hearing, and some are even saying like some of the characters, like they're ultimates or specials or whatever they're called like they described it by saying take so-and-so's ultimate from overwatch 2 <laughs> but it's this character instead it's this marvel character so uh, yeah you know uh, i might give it a, is there any word on it being is it is there a free-to-play model or do you have to it's like, gonna I, be free to play it will be free okay because i think yeah. it's, it's beta testing now so mm -hmm. i guess i'm sure it'll be out in a couple of months by the end of the year they showed that during during the uh state of play too and yeah, and and the boards, like the the levels to the characters, it looks like you're playing Marvel's version of Overwatch. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I, that, that's exactly what I've been hearing. It was like I was Overwatch from Marvel characters. Like, Overwatch. From Marvel here's characters. the funny part: Overwatch is not doing well. It's just not. Yeah. And there was there's so there was so many 
so much room for improvement that they chose not to go into. So someone's being smart and being like, well, since y'all don't want to put forth the effort. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how we got Power World. (laughs) I mean, that that is exactly how we got Power World because people were telling telling Game Freak, look, we need you to do this. We want to do this. We want to see Pokemon go in this XYZ direction. And Pokemon company was like, nah, we're good going right where we are. So somebody else said, all right, fine, we'll do it. I'm old Pokemon, but blackjack and shotguns. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and 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 labor camps, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and labor camp. No, no, and labor camps on right. I mean it's pretty clear who made Power World played Pokemon back in the day and were like, oh, I wish we could do this, I wish we could do that. And they finally became a game developer and said, fine, we could make it now. I blew myself fine. I'll do it myself. He's like, yeah, that Thanos. I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, you got something to say, Corey? Look, you on? Looking at looking at Power World just makes me think about Detective Pikachu the movie, which is great. It, it's, a great movie. it's a great movie with one big ass plot hole. What? Why did this child not know his dad's voice? I think Paul was talking about that before. He's I don't know. Man. He didn't understand that Pikachu sounds a lot like his dad. <laughs> um, what, what's that mean? <laughs> you gotta put your hand. You gotta put your, you're gonna say something, but then you can put your hand back down because you thought about it and it's like, yeah, you got a point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't even argue with that. Um, DM stuff on your wall. Do, 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 do you play Dungeons and Dragons? Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, yes, I haven't had a chance to play in a while, but I do play and I do enjoy playing. And then, nice. uh, I've actually been trying to find a game, but it's been. Yeah, my timing has been hit or miss. So, but yes, I do enjoy my Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Maybe you should uh, invite him to play. I'm sorry. What? He definitely, he definitely just jumped in play? my session. My players are are some bastards, but yeah, we definitely gotta have more people. Look, man, we can't. Look, we can't be having the murder hobos out here, man. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's all. That's all. You people are are murder hobos. Like nobody mm-hmm. like takes the character. And plays it sensibly. They go into town and like, hey, I want this potion. Potion ship like, oh yeah, a hundred gold. They're like, nah, I'm going to take it. Like what? Right. Still like, hold on. I'm looking like, no, give, give my potion back, and then you kill the shopkeeper. And as the young, I'm like, what do you want? What do you want me to do with this? Like, <laughs> like Mm-mm. you're a murderer now. Right? No, you don't that's understand what I mean. why they're getting chased out of town or being locked up. Right. Uh, well, that's when you got like cheat. some. We see you. <laughs> yeah, that's when you got like some level twenty guards on patrol. It's like, okay, right. go, ahead, go ahead and steal that potion, or right. you know, the the shopkeeper is truly like a retired adventurer, and they're like <laughs> level nineteen or something like that. So you try to attack them, and they resist it, and then it's like. They just walk over to the wall, and there's like a fancy ornate sword in the wall. They just walk over to it, pick it up, and it's like, it's been a while, but I think I still got it. <laughs> Roll initiative. <laughs> Find out the well, shopkeeper's like a retired fighter. <laughs> I, have been, I have been in a few times, too. You know, mm-hmm. in the winter, we have a whole convention here in Philadelphia dedicated to tabletop gaming like D&D called Pax Unplugged. Okay, I've heard of. Okay, I've. Um, it's. I guess I'm assuming it's a part of the PAX like yeah. line or community. Okay, mm-hmm. I think I've heard of PAX Unplugged. Okay, and it's nothing. Uh, it's, you said it's all tabletop. It's all it's a, tabletop. It's a convention nice. dedicated to nothing but tabletop games. You should come on down. Shoot, I have to try. I have to try and make it up there for once. I, I do want to start trying to go like out of state to other cons and stuff like that. And speaking of <laughs> tabletop, um. There's this one tabletop, and I'm, I'm waiting for them to eventually release it. They started off with a Kickstarter called The Motherlands. 
and it was uh yep it's a, it's a tabletop all black creators yeah you can go check them out on kickstarter i don't know if you can actually buy into the kickstarter anymore but you can at least look up the details and everything it's called motherlands uh it's a group of maybe six or seven black creators they all got together using the uh cypher system i think what they did and they built you know they built a tabletop you know complete with the its own world its own races and classes and everything like that but uh okay I, i'm already i'm already on it all right nice might even recognize a couple of those people there. <clears throat> I do recognize a few of these people. I'll say, you know, Tanya the Past, B. Dave Walters. Uh, mm. Okay. Recent controversy oh. aside, Gabe Hicks was associated with them, but he no longer is. Good. Uh, I don't even know what all that was about. There's always, always something. Okay. Long story short. It was found that he was abusive to some of his former partners. He's a bastard. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He 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 was he was abusive to some of his former partners. God to say the name no on that. God to say the name no. Right, exactly. And he got dropped like a hot potato quick. Like any like anybody that really messed with him on a high level dropped him instantly. And he was involved with the motherlands, and they've already cut they've already cut ties with him. They announced he just got a panel snap. He really did. <laughs> he really did, but um, <clears throat> but yeah. So that is one I've been keeping an eye on. I bought into that Kickstarter, and hopefully they ship it out this year. Are you? Um, do you play any other tabletops? Uh, is there any other tabletops? I have messed around with Vampire the Masquerade a little bit. Nice. Um, I've I've wanted to try uh, Cyberpunk, the old Cyberpunk. <laughs> TV, I never had a chance to play it, but I'd like I to try going, it. I was going to say, if you come to Philly, you can meet uh, Corey Dad. Shut up! <laughs> wait, wait, what's going on with Corey's dad? The creator, the creator of Cyberpunk, Mike Pondsmith. <laughs> he what? Demon. <laughs> <laughs> wait, are you related? <laughs> No, are you no. Oh, I was like, I was, are you related to Mike Pond Smith? Like, get out of here. No, I'm not related to him. We can but send you a picture. There's a photo of they us. They look like his side. Pond Smith looked like his goddamn daddy. And owes you <laughs> 35 years of back child support. <laughs> not the child support. Better get you some internet <laughs> uh, fucking cyberpunk money. Yeah. Yo, he came out of nowhere. I'm like, who's that last man? <laughs> so he owes somebody a cut of the cyberpunk money. <laughs> Yo, so, me, uh, so so last so last we was there with uh with, with, with Mike Cosper and we got a and Corey actually interview with him, right? So so when we go there, me, him, and Mike is talking, right? And and no lie, I wish I had this on camera. Corey like, hey Mr. Pond Smith, it's nice to meet you. Mike said, No, Corey, call me dad. It's okay. All right. I, I was like, yo, I don't have my camera on. <laughs> you, got, you gotta call him dad now. <laughs> I can't st <laughs> you gotta call him dad. <laughs> hey, hey uh, Johnny, no lie. I'm gonna post a picture on the TikTok. They look just alike side by side. He looked like he was about to pull up the photo now. Mm -mm. <laughs> But yeah, it's a it's a great game. Uh, it's a great game, and the, with all the updates that happened with the video game, they bought a lot of elements into the uh, into the video game. So yeah. it's like, oh, I can now I I now have to watch what I add to my body because I can get cyber psychosis and go crazy. All right. Okay. So that wasn't any initial. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> you gotta call him dad now. Right. <laughs> or at least, or at least, oh, look at you and your, <laughs> look at you and your daddy. Look at you and your pappy. Same glasses on, and everything. Same I mean, vibe. What makes it funnier is convention. <laughs> he looks nothing like him. <laughs> but the, but as soon as you hear him talk, you're just like, oh, you're. Definitely. <laughs> I don't like your daddy boy. We love you guys. Take a look. There you go. Oh, yeah. Man. 
Yeah, and we got it too. So if you come down for for like Pax on Club, we'll definitely do a session together. Shoot, mm-hmm. I had to get that. Had to get on that. But yeah, with with the tabletop stuff, I I I haven't had a whole lot of opportunity to play different things. I've like played a fair amount of D and D. You know, I've done the vampire. Uh, would love to play Cyberpunk if I ever got a chance. What I would like to try also do is get out and play like the ones that aren't major mainstream because you know some of those smaller you know i guess indie created games you know some of those aren't bad oh, either yeah. and you know it could be worth it to put some put some voice on some of those so you know just want to broaden my horizons on ttrpgs really just want to play some more different ones right no right. there's uh let's see i know i play played a little bit of pathfinder the first edition is i think they're on second or third edition right now so that's been a while. Shoot, and hit, and, and the creator of Pathfinder and Mike, they're just like best buds. <laughs> mm, wow. So, are you are you watching any any anime right now or, or, or any other shows? Um, okay, so as far as anime right now, uh, the one that I'm watching right now that has my most attention is one on Hulu called Mission Yozakura Family. Mm, it's a, that just yeah. popped up on my own country road too. Right. It's about this uh kid, uh a teenager, and him and his like childhood friend, they've known each other for a very long time, and they kind of start to, you know, as teenagers do, start to get close. And then he finds out she's actually descended from a long line of spies that date back to like feudal Japan. And then it's he meets their he meets her family and then they kind of get all into it. You know, they become betrothed or arranged or whatever like that. And then it's he kind of folds into that family. He starts training to be a spy. And it's just, you know, chaos ensues from there. So I've been watching that. Uh, okay. That's pretty much that one. I've been watching Delicious in Dungeon on Netflix. Yeah, that's that's like just it. funny. I uh, love that one. I yeah. But that. Delicious in Dungeon is awesome. Uh and even though it's not anime, I'm on the last episode of Avatar: The Last Airbender live action. Uh, my uh, my my kind of experiment there is I never watched the whole original yeah, cartoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah like a, I watched it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so yeah, I've I've almost finished the final episode that's out now of like season one. So I'll, I'm gonna try and have my impressions video of that out next week, and it's like. I, I truly feel like I missed something by not watching that cartoon back in the day. Like I can, I can readily, agree. I I know I can understand why people enjoy Avatar so much now. Yes. You know that it got that live action, and people, yes. you know, argue as to whether it's anime or not, and frequently bring it up as if it's anime. I mean, it's it's a great show. I I, I love the live action, so I imagine what the you know, and that's the cartoon compressed. Yeah, right. if you stretch it all out as the original cartoon did, I'm sure I'll enjoy it when I go back and watch it eventually. <laughs> and you did the same thing for uh, One Piece, right? Uh, well, I actually have uh, watched One Piece, okay. but yes, I, I talked about the live action a little bit, but I, I did enjoy One Piece. Like I, I enjoyed the One Piece live action because again, they condensed it so well. Yeah. Like the was it? There's eight episodes in that first season. But they got all the way to Arlong Park and beat Arlong right. in like in such a short time. Like I even sat down and did the math on that. Like it took in the original anime, it took about 40 episodes to get to Arlong and beat him, which right. is like 20 hours. But in the live action, they did it in eight hours. Yeah. So it's like it's impressive. If if Oda wasn't there telling them what to do. I don't think it would have been successful. Probably not. Yeah, because he like he made them redo whole scenes. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's just like, nah, I don't like that. We're mm-mm, no, mm-hmm. nah. Yeah. And he put um, yeah. he, he also had, it Luffy. Exactly. Yeah, he he put personal input into. I like this person. We go for that person. He he was involved. Like he has his hands all up in. He the looked at him and was like. Have him come by my house. <laughs> talk. Right. We need to talk to him. <laughs> right. He just sat down at eight. And he's just like, yeah, I like this kid. He's happy. He looks like those, nothing's going to stop him. So, but yeah, I'm very much looking forward. Well, what do you think of uh, anime 
getting the the, the live action treatment man i, I, I think it's definitely gotten better uh, it is definitely improved and i think it's largely because the original creators are starting to be like okay maybe i need to have my hand in this like you yeah. said oda had his hand in one piece i'm pretty sure uh the last of uh, the the avatar creators i think they had their hands in it up to a certain point mm -hmm. but i think they've backed out of it unfortunately so maybe this will affect season two i don't know but yeah, it's definitely like adaptations have definitely gotten better. I mean, even just like four or five years ago, remember that live action Death Note movie? <laughs> Go yeah, ahead, Corey. Go yeah, on, Corey. Corey knows. <laughs> there was so there was so many levels of disgust I had for that movie, and I had and I I felt bad for the director because even he was just like this was not the plan. He was like he was like. He's like they, he was just like that's all I'm gonna say. He's like I know exactly what Death Note is. This was not the plan. This was not my choice. I was like, oh, so you just kind of, you just got kind of stuck here. The only good thing about that adaptation was William Defoe. I was literally just about to say that. Yeah. What about what about Lakeith Stanfield as L? Uh, you know what? He was fine as well. He he he. He carried he carried it just like L, so I get it. He's fine, but everything else around it is what what. Right. Uh, they're they're both good actors, but you can only do a good actor can only do so much. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. I I just I wouldn't throw Dale Day Lewis in Menace to Society. Exactly. What what are you gonna do with that? <laughs> I'm sure it'd be interesting, but. I don't think it's gonna be good. <laughs> I mean, you would I would trust him. He would try. He would genuinely try. But what's he gonna do with that? fuck you say about my mother? <laughs> right. <laughs> but but like I but I agree I agree with you though. So like we seen uh The Last of Us and 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 Naughty Dog was a part of the whole production. Mm -hmm. Um Fallout just came out, and Bethesda was a part of the whole production. Like they seen like these adaptations go awry and go to shit because they kind of just hand over their baby to somebody that don't know what the fuck to do with it. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Death Note, uh, I would say um, Bleach was okay. Bleach to me was like was 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 good. That's because Bleach was, Bleach was produced and directed in Japan. That's oh, why. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. why. So even if Kubo wasn't involved, it at least was made in Japan. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But, but, I but they, jacked up, um, they jacked up uh, Cowboy Bebop. And I see, I liked it. I, I thought it was I, a good first season. I liked Cowboy Bebop. I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. I did not. Ex I didn't expect what's the name to pull off. Uh, pull him off at his age, but I was like, "Oh, Spike." Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Okay, Cho, I see you." Mm -hmm. I thought that. I thought that. I thought everything was excellent. I think people were just hating, uh, hating for the sake of it. Uh, I think the anime fans went after that because they, they i think they were mad that it wasn't just a shot for shot remake or reproduction of the anime like they they just wanted people to act out the anime and i'm like no because i even enjoyed like one thing i liked about live action cowboy bebop is Faye felt more lively to me in the live action and the original anime it felt like she was just a the, the femme fatale trope Mm -hmm. And she really, and even though she had a story about trying to find her past and everything, it just felt flat to me personally. But at least in the live action where she is more, more lively, a little more interactive, I, I like live action Faye, which is really garbage because live action Faye got a lot of crap from fans she when she got cast. Yeah, she, yep, she's the only one in that got ran off of social media over it. And she actually did a good job, in my opinion. 
I'm 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 right with you too. I I liked Cowboy Bebop live action, and it's a shame that we're not going to get any more. But especially with uh, with Edward not showing up until the very end of the final episode, I'm like, well, ah! that, that was Edward, and I was. And like with the way it ended, they like the three of them went their separate ways. Spike meets Edward, and I was like, "This was such a great setup." And people are just stuck in their nostalgia, and they didn't want to see anything different than the anime from what was that early two thousands? Can we be about yeah. so? so it's, it's so it's a shame. It's it's so weird because then we had Roni Kenshin movies, which were like awesome. All three of them great. Uh, it's 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 so it's so weird. I I think, which I guess you know you go into the problems with the anime community itself these days, and it's like, come on, y'all, you can't be stuck in your nostalgia. I I, I fully admit, I'm one of those that got stuck in his nostalgia for a very long time, and you know I had a hard time trying to watch new stuff, but I had to get over it. Right. But you know that's all there is to it. Did we just lose Corey? Did he freeze? Yeah, I, I think, think he, he did. Up. Yep, he froze yeah. up. <laughs> All right, I we, think we can him to freeze that. <laughs> right, we'll keep it going until he gets back. Hopefully, he realizes he's frozen up. Um, but now, uh, are you watching anything else right now? Um, honestly, no. Um, I'm not watching a whole lot of anime. But you know, I'm still reading. I'm reading Mission Ozakura Family. I'm reading One Piece. I'm not watching the anime these days. In fact, in terms of One Piece anime, I'm actually still back at the end of Dress Rosa, but I'm caught up in the manga. So, right. and let's see what else am I working with? Uh, not not doing a whole lot in terms of anime and manga these days. But you know, as stuff comes along, I hear about this title. I hear about that title. I'm sure things will switch up. Um, as I know, or was it a couple of days ago, a new Ghost in the Shell anime was announced, and then said that's going to drop in 2026, I think, which, in my opinion, is badly needed because <laughs> that, uh, speak Netflix, yeah. that Netflix, uh, what was it, standalone complex 2045, uh, I kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> so, and, and I'm with really you sure because I, I, like Ghost in the Shell was one of the ones that like that I got into when I started getting in, in, into uh, anime. Mm. Ghost in the Shell was like one of the first ones, and, and we was at PAX one year, and we actually met the creator of, of Ghost in the Shell. So, oh, nice! Yeah. I would, yeah, that's actually a set of of voice actor signatures I'd like to get. I would actually like to get the major Bato of signatures on something. Hopefully, I'll meet them at a con one day. I, I would right. love to get those. Uh, so, but yeah, something about 2045 though, I just was not feeling it and it, it's okay. And, but you know, what goes in the shell, that's just one of my absolute favorites of, you know, you ask me my top 10 list and ghost in the shell is going to be up there. Top three every time, if not top one, that's, that's, this is my quintessential stuff there. Can so, never... so you must have loved the movie with, with Scarlett Johansson, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. I knew you were going to bring that up. Here's the thing. <laughs> Confession. I still have not watched that yet. Uh, I Because it's like, I, I kind of want to want... Right. I want to watch it because I'm a Ghost in the Shell fan. I want to give it a chance. But I know, you know, like the, the you know, critics, fans, and everything, like they tore... That movie got tore apart. Yeah. And I'm scared to watch it because I don't want to watch it and then just have those bad memories of like this, this is what americans got hey. You know? hey what's going on my man we were talking about um how much johnny loves uh ghost in the shell the live back uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> he, he, man, he he went and dropped the scarlett johansson movie on me and i like i gotta confess i still haven't watched it yet and i'm kind of scared to watch it, <laughs> it it's the the visually the visual, it looks good. The, the visuals are, are are spot on. Okay, so it looks good. Okay, yeah, it, it, it looks amazing. It. But when you talk Ghost and Show, you got to have the looks. You got to have that world. You got to have that presentation. And, and, and I want to say Scarlett did a good job as Major, but 
It just fell off. I'll say this. Alita Battle Angel is a far more superior adaptation. That was good. That's tough to beat. Okay. Uh, yeah, Battle Angel Alita, that, that's hard to beat. <laughs> Man, that was a that was a far more superior adaptation. Mm-hmm. I can watch that again. Um, I need to go find where that is. I, <laughs> I, 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 I watch that tonight. I'm going to watch that tonight. <laughs> it's, it's a move. Like it was, it's yeah. definitely a move. All right. Uh, all right. Now we got to do what we call the lightning round. Five okay. quick questions. Uh, all right. All right. All right. Ready? All right. Uh, favorite sandwich? Mm, turkey and cheese. Okay. Okay. Uh, favorite I think I'm gonna ask you favorite video game. Favorite video game, uh, top favorite video game of all, Final Fantasy IV. Mm, nice, nice. All right. Uh, if you could bring back, if you could make one game to a uh, to a live adaptation, what would it be? You said one game to a live action adaptation. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would take Legend of Zelda. Mm. I'm waiting for that too, actually. Oh, I'm ready for that. I want it. I'm I want a live that. action Zelda. <laughs> Illumination announced that, that that they're making something, so I'm hoping it's going to be right. Zelda. It's not going to uh, be live action, but they are making the Smash Brothers universe. Is that is that the next part they're making? I'm calling it now. After at after this next Mario Brothers movie. They're gonna hit at a Smash Brothers universe. Okay. All I'm saying is, if you really uh, uh, talk about, you know, actually, I'm gonna change my answer since we're kind of getting a Legend of Zelda already. Next adaptation I would like Metroid. Give also, me a, like, give also, me like that that Metroid. art style that Mario was in. Give me a Metroid movie in that and make it an adult movie. <laughs> you gotta make it a horror, like a sci-fi Space horror. horror. Yes, yeah. sci-fi yeah. horror movie. Yeah, yes. that that would be insane. See things running around through through uh, aliens, and mm -hmm. that would. Be mm. All right. Uh, what, what 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 would be your your fantasy crossover? A fantasy crossover. Oh, mm. I would like to see. Oh, fantasy crossover! Fantasy crossover. Hmm. I would actually like to see. Oh man, I think you might you might have something there because too many too many possibilities are coming up. Um, I would actually like to see. Speaking of Legend of Zelda, drop Link in the God of War universe. <laughs> <clears throat> let him let him run through that adventure fighting literal gods. You can let put him in either. In either series, you could put him in when he was dealing with the uh, Greek pantheon or the Norse pantheon. Drop Link into that. <laughs> I was going to say Link and Dark Souls, but that might be a little too mean. Wow. I, I, don't, I don't think, think Link Dark Souls. I don't, he I don't think any world... I, I don't think Link's going to turn out... <laughs> I, I'll, I, it doesn't look well for, the little, for that little guy. Look, <laughs> Link is the living embodiment of courage. I said, step to the plate. Is, Link is more of a cannon than you're giving him credit for. Listen, I understand he, he's a living embodiment of courage. God of War is the is the world of hands. You can be brave as you want, and Kratos will beat the ever loving snot out of you. Okay, now if Link had to fight Kratos, that's a whole other question. Because <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> If Link, if Link survives that world, he's going to have PTSD and CTE. Yeah, my man is, <laughs> my man is not going to be well when he comes out the other side of that. <laughs> I mean, he wouldn't. He would. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, one, one more question. All right. What character would you love to have a meal with? Like, what character would I like to have a meal with? Yeah. Um, okay, I'd like to have a meal with... Hmm. I'm gonna say 
Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. Hmm. Ah, dubstep part. Uh, I mean, just because I I just really enjoyed that first game. I haven't had a chance to play the second one. Waiting to try to get my PC up to snuff so I can just play it on PC. But <clears throat> it was just, you know, that engaging story. That world was beautiful. Like yes. I, it, it is one of my top favorite games, and that's one of those that I could be due for a playthrough, you know, maybe might replay that eventually or something like that. But I think, yeah, just to be able to sit and just talk and chat, like, post-game or something like that and just talk about what she went through and what she did and everything. Yeah. One of my favorite things about the game was was returning back home and talking to Rose. Mm, and, 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 tell them, and tell them how how, how my life is going up again. I, I, I love that simple fact of the game. Mm-hmm. That's such yeah. a... All right, that's it. Oh, it. And we are at time. Well, Jolly Jolly Yellow Nerd, it's been an absolute pleasure having you with us today. It has been a pleasure really being is. here. I'm glad you invited me. Sure, sure. Now, for those who don't follow him, uh, y'all need to start following him now. That's what you need to start following him. Now, now, <laughs> would be, now would be a very good time. <laughs> his, his links will be down in the description. Uh, his uh, his TikTok and his Instagram. Give him a follow on both. Let's let's shoot those numbers up. All right. And of course, we we'll take a moment to talk to you guys out there. We want to thank you guys for listening in to the American Junkies podcast today. Uh, for you folks out there who downloaded it onto wherever you listen to your podcast, we appreciate you guys so much. Make sure you let us know how you feel, just as well as our folks out there on YouTube. Hopefully, hopefully you're subscribed because we're having people watching, but they're not subscribed. We need, to try, we need to try and make this thing work. So make sure you're hitting subscribe and hit that bell icon. And we talk about a lot of things here, especially with Jolly Yellow Nerd. Please tell us what you think in the comments. Also, uh, subscribe to us on Patreon. You can go watch this, I think, the next day. If not, you got to wait a whole week before we put the uh, episode out. So subscribe to Patreon. <laughs> anything anything you want to say to the fans, Jolly? Just uh, once again, thank you guys for having me out here. I I enjoy having these conversations with different folks. I love having them. So don't be scared to call me up if you ever need an extra body on something one day. Mm-hmm. And yeah. for you, <laughs> oh, oh, you trying to hold me to it? And he's like, oh, oh, what? <laughs> is, that a, is that a promise? <laughs> but uh, um, and the Mirror Media fans, thank you all for giving me your time to take some time out of your day and listen to me. I. I'm humbled and I'm honored to be able to come out and hang out with you folks today. And he looks like he's going to like, oh, this way. Okay. Looks like he is he going to bring me back in one day. Yeah, he's he ready. He's <laughs> There's going to be a TikTok message waiting for me talking about some, um, so about that. <laughs> <laughs> but now, it's all in good fun. And I, hey, we can talk. Like, I, I'm all for working with other folks and getting things out there. I want to broaden my horizons. Right. So we can do that. Zero dollar. There you go. Zero. Yep, zero dollar. <laughs> So, yes, uh, Ameri Media Nation, thank you all for, for giving me your time and giving me your attention. All right. We're done. Folks, this has, been, this has been the Ameri Junkies podcast. We'll be seeing you guys next time. Please take care of yourself and be well.